Hello everyone, hopefully uh, you're all well, it's Classic 80s Fanboy here. Now today, what I'd like to do is to um, go through some of the classic Doctor Who annuals that I have in my collection. Well, the ones I'm going to show you now are the only classic Doctor Who annuals I have in my collection because I only wanted to collect a certain range. I only wanted to collect between uh, the Tom Baker period. So the first one I'm going to show you is uh, not... Tom Baker, it's uh, it's John Pertwee, and the reason it's John Pertwee is because it's the annual for 1975, and 1975 was the year I was born, so that's what we're going to start off with, but first, um, they were made by World Distributors, and before we begin, I just want to give you a brief talk about World Distributors and who they are. So World Distributors was set up by three brothers. Uh, Sydney, John and Alfred Pemberton. They set up in Manchester just after World War II. And these annuals were always published in the autumn time. And the annual, annuals would usually have the following year printed on the cover. So to children in their mind's eye, it wouldn't appear to be out of date. So they'd, it, they'd print them in uh, the year before and they'd go out in the uh, autumn of that year, but they'd be for the year after. So some of the titles they published include, included Doctor Who, Dalek Annuals, K9, The Avengers, and I'll take it they mean the new Avengers as well as the old, old Avengers. Um, I think the new Avengers was included with that as well. Blake 7, Terror Hawks, Star Trek, Space 1999, and Tarzan. So the company... Uh, was created um, as and known as Well Distributors Manchester Limited, and they ceased trading in two thousand and one. So they were publishing all the way up to two thousand and one. Then they they also had the American rights to uh, produce the Marvel annuals and uh, a few of the American uh, cartoon lines as well. As I say, they traded all the way up until 2001, and then unfortunately, they ceased to be. Okay, so we'll start going through the first one. Now, the way my camera's set up, unfortunately, I've only got a camera phone. It doesn't zoom in or zoom out. So I'm gonna, I've, I've got it on a stand, but I'm going to have to reach round and, and show you the annual. It might be chopped off, okay, but that's the way it is. I can't do anything about that, I'm afraid, um, until I get a proper camera or proper camcorder with a proper tripod. So at the moment, we're just, the way I'm talking is just gonna hold it up in front of the camera and flick through some of the pages because they're the best of what I could get hold of at, the, at this present time, all right? So, and and basically they cost between zero to 15 pounds. So they can be quite expensive. The older ones are very more expensive than the newer ones, obviously. Um, but the most I paid for one was about eleven pounds, I think twelve pounds. Anyway, I'll just, I'll just, uh, we'll just have a look through them and look at the covers and the back and uh, just flick through them. You'll find out some, some of these are not clipped as well, so that will show you the price on there of how much they were when they first came out. All right, so we'll start with the first one. The first one I said was John Pertwee. So here it is here. John Pertwee, annual 1975. Obviously, this was when Joe had, had gone, but Joe is included in, in some of these uh, pages. So, just a quick look at the bottom. Turn it around. It's a lovely picture there, John, John there. Annual 1975. Let me open it up. I've got to be careful with some of these pages as well because young children have written their addresses on, so I'm going to try and avoid that if I can. But there, can you see the 90p? Some colourful artwork there. And I don't want to open these fully either because, as I say, a lot of these, the spines are intact, and that's how I want them to stay. So the more you open them out, the more you put the spines under pressure. And because these are over 40 years old, obviously, there's the chance of them falling apart. So I'm just going to do a quick flip. 
most of the comic strips were in um, two tone. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Some great comic strips, and and some of these were actually filled crosswords and filled in, and some weren't, you know. So, so some great artwork in there, and the difference between these and the newer annuals as well is the thickness. I mean, you get you, you had a lot for your money for ninety p. There's a hell of a lot of. Uh, Info there and stories, okay. So, I'll just quickly show you that one again, right? And on to the next one. So, the next one was the start of the Tom Baker era, which was 1976. Sorry if, I, if the light is reflecting off that, I'll come up and that's a hell of a cover there. Let's see. These are all by um, World Distributors. I'll give you a look at the back. The Doctor with Bessie. So I'll go from the back because I don't want to, if there is a, a dress on the front, I don't want to show it. But you can see now this is one of the ones where it hasn't been filled in at all. I'm quite proud of that. It means it's a good, nice, clean copy. But the colours are staggering. For the, for the age and the condition the book's in, it's really in nice condition. Now I need to talk about this later. Big Finish has just released CDs um, and audiobooks. And uh, they are extracts from one of the, from some of the annuals, and the Sinister Sponge is one of the uh, stories that they've used. And it's what the title is on the CD. I think I'll have to go and have a look, but we'll talk about them later on. But that's the sort of condition that I've got them in. Okay, and then I, that one when they when they asked when you buy stuff on eBay and they say it's been clipped, what they mean is that that there's a price tag usually down there in the corner that lets you know how much the price is. And if it's been clipped, it means it's been cut cut off. Okay, so if you see a book or anything that says it's it's been clipped, it means that the corner has been cut. Okay, and unclipped means that the uh, Corner still there with the price tag on. Yeah, as I say, this one hasn't been saw. Um, dress has not been put on this one. But I try not to open them too much and, and try and keep them in a good condition as I can. Because they, if you look after them, they will last. So the next one, 1977. This one's a bigger one, so... I'll have to bring it back a bit more. There we go. That was when he was... F that's a art print of, of when he was filmed on Dartmoor. He broke his collarbone. He slipped up on one of the uh, rocks near a tour and landed and, and fractured his collarbone. That's why when you see the Suntaran experiment, he wears his scarf and it's wrapped around his arm because he used it as a sort of sling. Um, because generally he was in quite a bit of pain, even with a, um, a couple of shots that he had to, you know, like take the pain away, he was still in pain. That's why he wore his, his scarf like that as a sling. For those people who didn't know. Okay. Sorry about a beeping, that's just my washing machine. Because this one's considerably bigger, you might not be able to see the pages as well. But I'm not going to flick through every single page. I'm just going to go. This one doesn't look as if it's been written on either. 
some really lovely comic strips there body snatcher and some of the colouring in is is lovely and I think these are over 40 years old and they still survived the test of time quite astounding right so there's that one Next we have 1978. This one has obviously got where the unit have started using their helicopters and that lot, and there's a helicopter there. This one, the covers is a little bit scratched. You can see the, the pen lines where, where somebody's obviously used it to write over or draw over. A child has, looks like it, and it's imprinted itself on the cover. But it's still a nice copy. We'll flip through this. One thing I haven't noticed that's roughly the same is is the cartoon strips are all two tone and everything else. Here we go. Look at the colours popping out there. Now these are, I have to be careful, this one is starting, the pages are starting to fall out of this one. So once the pages start falling out, there's not really an awful lot you can do. Um, what I tend to do is, don't use sellotape. Don't try and stick it in with sellotape because you just damage it even further. Just keep the page along with the book itself. Um, and that's all you can do, really. As you can see, there's some pencil marks in there. I'll have to get a, a rubber in there later and try and rub out. So, there we go. There's that one. You see, down the bottom, it is starting to rip. You just need to be gentle and, and with them. But but you have to understand that these are very old as well. Now I can remember having this one as a child. I can, I can remember distinctly having this one. Uh, I don't know where I got it from. Um, but I definitely remember this, this cover. I used, used to having this one. I might have picked it up first time from a jumbo sale. Um... But this is not the original one that I had, obviously. But I can remember having this one in the 80s, def definitely. Somebody might have picked it up for me in a jumble cell, or, or my nan, when she was alive, bless her. Yeah, there are some good. Good stuff in here. I like to take them out every once in a while and read the comic strips. And because some of the artwork I, I think is 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 absolutely lovely. It's it's a lot more detailed than the than the stuff we have today. I mean you wouldn't have an artist do that these you know, unless they were into heavily defined detail, you wouldn't have artists drawing like that comic strips and none of these pages look like they've been used either all well, that one has so that will have a rubber on it later but yeah so I do apologise, it's, it's, I've got no zoom function on the um, camera, so I can't zoom out. Well, I can't do that because that's got an address on it. But there's the back. That's his um, Doctor Who at the beginning, where in the time tunnel, that's, that's his face there, you know. But we all know that anyway. Nineteen eighty. This was his e-space stuff. What that looks 
could be Warriors Gate, I think. I'm not quite sure on that, but look at he's got a safety safety pin there. That's quite funny. Oh, I've got a visitor. Come on. Danny, come. She's gone. Right, I'll just flick through this as well. So this is the um, second book I picked up of, of this copy. The first copy I got wasn't very good, start falling apart, which is the same with the 1979 image. What I'll do is have a look to see if I can find another copy, a better copy. And that's generally how I work. I'll buy something that's not as good as the original, um, especially when it comes to Dr. Classic items. I'll buy something basically what I can afford, and then when um, I, I tend to get a little bit more money, I'll just look for the you know the next level up basically, and uh, especially when it comes to books, the good in of books. Um, I'll put up there. There you go. And the last one of Tom Baker's tenure, 1981. I'll just move it to the side. I've got, I've got to be careful because my, my camera is actually on the left-hand side and in on this phone. It's not the top. It's right at the corner. So, there we go. Turn it around. Nice photo from him from City of Death. Only recorded in Paris. Lovely photo there. So we flick through this. Yeah, it looks like this one's been clipped as well, but you know when I said about the two tone colours. I was talking about plug in car, oh, look at that. In the 80s, they were talking about plug-in cars, electric power cars. Look what's going on now. So, yeah. As I say, some of the artwork was really, really well drawn. is for Venus so yeah my advice well it's not advice but I, I recommend picking these books up because they are really nice quality classic annuals I haven't really gone back to collect the 60s annuals um, I all I wanted to do because of lack of space I just wanted to collect the uh, doctor of my I mean, Tom Baker was my doctor, obviously, growing up. So that's who I wanted to collect. And he's he's more popular. If you go back to ask who the most well-known doctor is out of all of it, it would be Tom Baker. Right, the last one I wanted to show you. I definitely remember having this growing up. This was to celebrate the um, one of the, the, I think it was the 20, 25th anniversary, something like that. Um 20, 20th anniversary, they brought out a technical manual. And this was in um, the end of Tom Baker and Peter, the beginning of Peter Davison's era. But uh, 83 this was. So if you look, it's, it's got all different blueprints and how to build a TARDIS. Obviously, if you look at there, somebody's tried to uh, build the model TARDIS there out of cardboard. And basically, it's, it's just blueprints of, of all the enemies of the Doctor. That period. Fascinating book for the, for its age and time. 
This goes on about K9. Daleks. Anatomy of a Dalek. Talks about Davros. Sonic Screwdriver. Tower's Toolkit. Goes into more depth about the tar uh, the TARDIS and who, who the Doctor is. And it's got a forward by, or an introduction by, John Nathan Turner. Right, so I hope you enjoyed a brief look at all the, all the my annuals I have, well, the, the classic annuals I have. Um, as I say, when I get a better camera set up, I'll take you through my um, 2005 and onwards Dot Two annuals because I've got them all the way up until um, Jodie Whittaker because I'm not the biggest Jodie Whittaker fan, I have to tell you, and I don't like the, this new present era of Dot Two at the moment. So, um, anyway, thanks for watching. And before, <coughs> before I go, a lot of people didn't think uh, when they saw the um, the orb floating past my camera, they didn't realise how close I was to the um, cemetery when I put in my Facebook put my Facebook page that I lived next door to a cemetery. So what I'm going to do is at the end of this, I'll just add on footage of uh, a sh uh, quick thirty second shot of me outside. Well, I, was, I filmed from the window. And how close we are to the cemetery. All right. But anyway, you take care, stay safe, and I'll speak to you on the next video. Bye for now.